after all the research? The answer is put as much pressure on the king or the king area. And that is the answer. In simplified terms. Not negating all the other concepts that are underneath that concept. But in simple terms, it's to put as much pressure as you can onto the king or the king area. That's the, that's the whole process for chess. If you're wanting to improve, you have to create a sort of system that helps you to do that. So I'm going to try and um, demonstrate it for myself in this game. You still have to develop your pieces. You still have to get your positions. Yeah, so now he's gone and castled. So we want to be looking at taking advantage of that. But you don't go steaming in there like quick dirty tactics type thing. And um, that's not what this is about. We'll just carry on as normal. And when the opportunity arises, we start building slow incremental advantages towards their king area. Just bring the bishop here. Because we can spend quite a lot of time fencing around with the pawns, you know, in the center or away from the king. Um, a lot of activity going on in that area. And we miss out on the opportunity of putting pressure on the king area and losing out on tempo capture here. So I spent a lot of time analyzing my games, looking at the games that were lost or disadvantaged and majority of those games were the opponent had started to put pressure on the king area. So I was then having to defend my king area, wasting a lot of time defending my king area. I think I've got a nice little touch here, but I might lose out on tempo with my bishop, but we'll give it a try. Because it might, might attack the bishop here. I'm looking for my knight coming here, attacking the queen. He's moved the queen. He's obviously seen that. Okay, that must have been too obvious. So we've got the bishop now attacking through the to the king. Our knight can potentially come here, but though obviously the bishop will just take now because... Uh, so we've got the queen as well that can come across. Uh, our bishop is going to be under attack, but I want my queen into the game. So let's put pressure on the king area. I can move my queen safely here. It's a whole different sort of mindset. Others may think, oh, well, that's simple. I knew that anyway. Um... But for me, learning how to develop my game, that was the missing link. Yes, I had the checks, the captures, the threats to support the blocking um, and the strategy, which was to look at what the opponent was doing and trying to block off what the opponent was doing and then also enhancing my attacks as well. Um, but this missing link was the fact that, okay, throughout all of that, what position am I ending up in? Am I just fencing, blocking off a pawn, developing a pawn? So he's now attacking our queen. Doesn't want to give up this pawn here. I'm still liking my position there. I want to keep my queen in this line. Can't bring it there though. I'm going to have to bring it back here just for now. If I bring it here, his bishop's going to come and attack. Or do I come across? To the other side of the board. It's away from his queen king though. Decisions, decisions. Mm. What can we do? Bishop can attack. Some rook takes. It's probably a waste of a bishop there.
Hmm. Bring it here. Discover check on his queen, but his knight just takes our pawn. Uh, I'm bringing it here. Discover check on the queen. If his knight takes the pawn, we take his queen. Right, cool. So now our pawn can push through the center. I'm still wanting to maintain that pressure on the king area. Our knight is currently unprotected, so his bishop will take. So do I want to make my knight more active by bringing it closer to the king area? His bishop takes, pawn takes. Our pawn then is closer to the king area. Rook is on the e file. Hmm. So if we take here, he's got a 2 on 1 on our pawn. We can push up, I suppose. Well. Takes, takes. He's got a 2 on 1. We've got the discover check on his queen. Let's capture. Time's running out. So we can push onto the knight, as we probably said there. Trying to keep that pressure. Let's keep that on. And hmm. So we can go here with our rook pressuring his queen. Let's do that. What's the boomerang effect? It's Probably hide behind this pawn here. As this pawn is unprotected, but I suppose our rook could take then. So it's probably going to go to the side here. C C eight. Yep, C eight. So our rook can still take the pawn. Uh, or we take with the pawn, putting more pressure on the knight. Got to be careful of the boomerang effect with the knight. Where's he actually going to go? Could go back here. Mm. Is the rook better? I think the rook is better, you know. But then, mm, his bishop, no, no. I'm going to take with the rook. Feels like I may be able to squeeze the rook in towards the king area. Because he's feeling nicely protected with his rook and stuff, but we want to try and disturb all that. Ah, uh, he's not having any of it. He wants to exchange the queen off. It's too much pressure. Too much pressure. Mm. I, can't, I can't escape my queen. I can bring my queen back down here. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to capture so then we've got sights on this pawn here on C. Yeah, I think that's uh, doable, isn't it? Yeah. Two minutes, gonna have to move a little bit quicker. Obviously his rook will come and protect the pawn. White square bishop, attack his bishop here. Got to be careful, we've got the knight attacking, protecting the rook. Okay, so that sounds like a plan. Rook protects, bishop comes in attacks here. Maybe the bishop takes or maybe his rook comes. And we can exchange down. This poor knight at the moment is looking a bit lonely, but he's near my king area, so I'm not liking that. Okay, so those are the minor um, calculations. And the holistic idea is basically this powerful bishop here want to get that activated to help the pressure on the king area. So we've got the protection of the pawn, which he's going to he's going to potentially do, unless of course he wants to sacrifice it and develop his own answer. Oh, he's gone for the rook exchange. Ah, I can bring my rook here so that I'm still on. But I've got to be night, night, night. Let's just bring the rook here. So we want to still maintain pressure on that pawn at least and take that pawn off. And that's the small sort of um, development. And the strategical side of thinking is we want to be pressuring the king area. So I need to get my brain in thinking like that. Um, 
it does feel like a nice position, but it's uh, it's nice nice coming up protecting that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we might as well just take it off the board now, because the more dancing we do, we're going to lose out. So we're going to capture here. Okay, so it's all even, Stevens. So. All even Stevens, so we're looking to attack this pawn. Obviously, if it's bishop takes, then bishop takes, and it's bishop against the knight. Yep, so he does take, so we'll capture, pushes the pawn down so the bishop can't take, doesn't do that. And so we can rest easy here, I think. Just attacking the knight. And we can take the knight for free. Okay, so you can expect the opponent to uh, resign now. Yeah, so they've left the game. Okay, so that was interesting. Okay, so the answer to chess. And as we've, as we've mentioned, if you want to keep it simple with the, with my mantra, basically it's uh, pressure the king area or the king and maintain pressure on the king area. That is the, the big picture of what I'm trying to do in my games. Obviously, he's coming for the pawn here. Do we want to go protecting that? Let's see if we can attempt that. It's different when it's on the other side of the board. You don't go and try and protect it, but I'm wondering if you can do it this side. I've seen it done. Let's just attack the bishop here. I could have probably kept my bishop to keep the pressure on the king area. But I, I think the dark square bishop should be able to do some damage. So looking to try and get my pieces positioned to you know around the king area. Got the nice passage here with the dark you know the dark um, squares here. They may get blocked off, but yeah. So he's uh, starting to attack down the centre. The knight will take the pawn. I can just move my knight. I don't have to do anything with that pawn. Mm -hmm. So I can move my knight here, but then my knight's going to get attacked again, isn't it? Yeah, let's just go here. Open up some space around the king area, I think. The answer doesn't have to be pretty. It's not like an exact science. It's not like something out of a book or anything like that. The strategy uh, is basically just get the pieces off the, well, not the piece off the board, get to a position where you're putting pressure on the king. Yeah. I've had some awful games where opponents have just done exactly that. You know, uh, they've just pressured my king area, pressured it and pressured it. And, had no defense whatsoever loads and loads of games like that and i'm willing to learn from it i'm willing to understand well how is it that they did this and if it kept on happening and happening yeah, there had to be something in it um, because i was doing my checks captures threat support blocking position um, i'm feeling quite comfortable with that so we're going to go with the check on the king like we said so pressure in the king area for a moment his defense for this particular square here, e3, has disappeared. So we will be able to get his rook off the board Yeah, once that's done. Uh, oh, he's blocked down with his pawn. So I'm still going to go for a higher piece anyway. So we'll bring the knight through, attacking the queen. The queen will move, but we'll get the rook. So we'll be up that exchange for a moment. And the moment we still do have the bishop being able to put pressure on the king from the support of our queen. So... Yeah, again, this is the type of pressure type thing I'm talking about. It's not quick and dirty tactics. It's uh, building on attacking the king area or the um, or the king itself. Um, one of the key things there, though, is uh, I take his queen takes our pawn with a check. Hmm, that's a bit naughty, isn't it? 
I don't think I won't have enough time to castle. If I castle, and this knight's got our pawn here. Well, queen's got that. If I castle, let's just make, do a little count. I capture his queen takes. My queen comes here in front. He takes my queen. His knight takes. Uh, something doesn't feel right. Castle. His rook moves out of the way. Yeah, you see, now I'm on the back foot and I shouldn't be on the back foot. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep on the front foot and win the exchange. Because then I would lose any type of advantage that I potentially was building up. And that's going back to old school. So his queen can take if he wants. No, it doesn't. Takes to the king. Okay, so the bishop has doesn't have any power now with this attack here. But our pawn now is hanging a little bit loose. Eee, what can we do? Up the exchange. Don't want to be greedy. Um, could always bring it back or attack another piece. He's still going to get my pawn into. Okay, so he's still going to get the pawn. That's fine. Let's let let him have that. We're up the exchange, and we need to find another way now of pressuring the king area or the king. Hmm, seem to circumvent that. Mhm. Mm so queen takes the pawn here. Do we look to exchange off, or is he going to come down for our rook? Queen up. Where's his king? Mm, queen takes. Knight. Develop the knight. He's not actually taken. He's brought his knight down into the game. Mm. What's his knight doing? His knight goes here. Goes if I bring my knight into the game. Trying to develop my pieces. Uh, where's this king at? Or could I just go and castle? If I went and castle, there's not many pieces in front of my king though, is there? Ah, oh, his queen's coming down to put a check on my king. That's his answer. Ah, uh, yeah. So, if I went and castle, his queen's still going to come down here. Mm, yeah, go on castle. Yeah, so that's the that's what players use, you know. Um, if you're ever playing um, somebody who is who starts to put pressure on your king, Gary, this is the type of thing they're using. It's basically the answer. They're going right. How do I can how can I put pressure on the king as soon as possible or or not as soon as possible? Um, as I keep saying as soon as possible because it isn't that. It's as soon as as soon as it's available. And I'm looking at this pawn move that they've made now as a sort of loss in tempo because maybe they could have been building up the pressure maybe around my king area, uh, and I'm glad they haven't. So we can look to develop ours. Let's go and attack our attack his knight. This pawn here on E is still unprotected, so <laughs> um, he could be taking that off at any stage. So he still does have the queen coming here type situation, maybe to build on something. His knight can go back if it wants if it takes them we're supporting the pawn that's unprotected with the queen and then I'm trying to oh he's bringing his other knight in I'm going to have to capture because he's trying to complicate a situation that I really don't want complicating so his queen is in front of his king so if we can get a rook behind our queen
bring it here. I should bring it there. The uh, reason why I don't really put it here because his pawn's just going to drop down. But let's just put it here for now. If we can get a rook behind our queen, then we can get the queen exchanged off. His king is on a white square now, so he's, he's scared of the dark square bishop. He doesn't want any of that action. I think if he wants to win a tempo back, he pushes this, doesn't he? But we're on his pawn here as well, so he might be thinking, hmm, how do I support that? I'm going to have to move my knight so that my queen is protecting the pawn. <clears throat> so that gives us a tempo, I think, in bringing our rook across to d8. Hmm. Our rook is facing his king as well, so that's a good good starter for 10 as well in pressure in that area because it's always always about you don't have to be directly attacking the king if you've got your piece, pieces giving discovered check type positions in front of the king or around the king area that's the that, that's the idea oh oh okay so this is new it's wanting to protect the pawn so he's used it is attacking with it Okay, so we've got the rook here. I think we're still looking for that plan of the rook coming behind the queen. He's not yet activated his um, rook, so he's going to have to do a small move with his bishop. So if he brings his bishop out, then we can still do the rook move. It'll look like we're going to attack, so then he'll... Oh. Just bring this here. Oh, he's taking his queen off, king off of the line. He's, can you he hear me talking? Is this microphone two way or something? Yeah, so he's taking his king off of the line of the attack now, so his queen does not have to um, exchange. But if we put pressure here, because the bishop hasn't been developed, it's blocking the rook, his queen is going to be taken off the board. And if our rook goes here, then it's basically pinning the bishop to the um, to the rook. So I really want to fashion a way of getting this other rook up somehow. So push this pawn up to give space for this rook to come across, maybe. So again, that's the the idea. Um, pressure in the king area. Um, if we bring this rook here, or do we keep pushing? Can we keep pushing the pawn? I'll no, just bring this rook here for now. Yeah, idea is to keep the pressure on. It's it's not quick and dirty tactics things. It's small incremental moves to get better positions. And uh, do, 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 do. if the bishop, what is he saying? If the bishop move, bishop can just move here. And he could have done that before. Bishop to b2. Because then the rook takes and then the bishop takes. And I'm going to attack one of his pawns here. Um, with the possibility of maybe going rook here. And then if his bishop does move to the b2, then we'll capture and capture. He, do, he does. Um... It's a we're up a rook. He's also actually attacking our pawn here on e. I'm just going to go here, and we can take the bishop off the board. Some may say, "Well, you could have taken the rook," but I've got a pawn and then a bishop, so that's a, I think that's a quite a nice exchange. We'll take that off there. That bishop was looking a little bit strong, and they've the opponent's resigned. Okay, yeah, that was a nice example of trying to show uh, the answer in pressure in the king area. Just take it back so that we hopefully try and get a better understanding. We captured the pawn, and if we have a look at the king area now, we have two pawns already gravitating up towards the king area. We capture, develop the knight. Now we've got the dark square bishop angling towards the king area. Knight going towards the king area, attacking two key pieces. 
and then we get we win the exchange so that's pressure and it's also learning about how when to retreat and reposition and now we've got the rook facing the king yeah um pretty dangerous nice now coming through just attacking the knight looking to make some space towards the king area again and as we can see now the pressure starting to build up towards the king area and that was the crucial point right there and from that point moment on it's a matter of just keeping on building that pressure on the king area yeah i could have gone for his rook yeah from that point but the idea about the answer is to keep pressure on the king area i felt his bishop was a little bit strong in terms of the angle that it had on there why not take the opportunity to keep pressure on the king which we did and then we were able to capture the bishop smallest of differences between the checks captures threats supporting blocking type situation and the mantra that we're using which is the simple direct moves to take pieces off the board strategically and strategically it's looking at it differently